Hello 3D printing friends. Today on the BB3D channel we're going to take a look at Alien 3D's Alien Ooze PLA made by IC3D. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BB3D. Hi everyone, welcome back. So today we're taking a look at Alien 3D's Alien Ooze PLA, custom made by IC3D. I bought this spool when it was first released several months ago and I finally got a chance to get into it. The filament is US $27.99 for a one kilogram spool. Filament prices are still headed downward, but that's not a bad price for good extruded in the USA filament. The Alien Ooze PLA is a translucent PLA with a yellowy green color that's a good match for its name. Inside the box, the filament was sealed inside a non-resealable plastic bag with a desiccant pouch. I prefer resealable bags to help keep moisture at bay. Unfortunately, filament doesn't always come that way, and this is one of those times. The label on the spool indicates the material type, PLA, and the filament diameter, 1.75 millimeters. And while it has both IC3D and Alien 3D logos, the label does not list the expected precision of the filament or the recommended nozzle and bed temperature ranges for printing. For that information, you'll need to visit the Alien 3D website. When you do, you'll find that the recommended temperature range for the filament is between 215 and 240 degrees C with a bed temperature of 60 degrees. You'll also see that it shouldn't stray more than plus or minus 0.05 millimeters from its 1.75 millimeter diameter. The spool is not marked with a recycling symbol, and since there's no way for the recycling center to know what kind of plastic it is, you can't just toss it in the recycle bin when it's empty. But you can use it to hold filament samples like you'd get from the Alien 3D UFO Mystery Box or one of the other monthly subscription boxes. Now, for any filament that I use, I want to know how it performs before I start using it for a project. So, I have a testing method that I think gives a fair assessment of a filament's performance. The first thing that I print is a temperature tower, with a temperature range suitable for the filament that I'm testing. This allows me to see how the filament performs across a range of temperatures. Then, I choose the temperature that gave the best looking result and print the rest of the test suite at that temperature to further test the filament. In order to test how well the filament can bridge unsupported gaps, I print a bridging test file. To test the filament's resistance to stringing, when using my standard retraction settings, I print a retraction test file. I also print a common benchmarking model, Daniel Noray's 3D Benchy, and I print a Calicat calibration model, partly because it's a cat, but mostly to get an idea of the surface finish on boxy models. And I print the Aria Dragon designed by Luby 3 d because I think dragons are cool. She said that all her dragons were meant to be calibration objects, and Aria is a good dragon to print. She tests stringing, overhangs, fine pointy bits, and you can get a good idea of how a filament performs on a more organic type of model. And for her size, she doesn't really take all that long to print. Well, after hearing all of that, I'm sure you want to know how it performs, so here we go. Here is the temperature tower that I printed. Overall, it printed really well across the entire temperature range. Overhang performance was good across the entire range. Its ability to bridge gaps was consistent across all the temperatures, and the little spike inside this rounded bit here was also well reproduced across the entire range. Stringing is much more prominent at higher temperatures, diminishing as the temperature decreases. Based on the results from the temperature tower, I decided to print the rest of the test suite at 215 degrees C, which is the minimum recommended print temperature. All the models were sliced with Brucia Slicer and printed on a Creality Ender 3 Pro 3D printer. Apart from the temperature tower, all of these were printed with a 215 degree nozzle on a 60 degree bed. I sliced these using my typical print settings. I used a 0.2 millimeter layer height, 15% infill, and a speed of 40 millimeters per second. I sliced these using my 345 method. That's three perimeters, four bottom layers, and five top layers. And I set the outermost shell to print at 20 millimeters per second for a smoother finish. So let's take a look at the results. Here is the bridging test. The Alien Ooze performance is very good on all the bridges. The longest bridge spans nearly 52 millimeters and there was no discernible sagging. To me, that's a pretty impressive span without any support material. And while there was a very small amount of stringing within the print, it's nearly invisible. Now, here is the retraction slash stringing test. The columns are straight and there are just a few fine bits of cobwebs which are easily removed just by pinching and pulling. I really enjoy the glass-like quality of the filament on these columns. There's not much more to say about this test given how well it printed. 
Next is Daniel Narey's 3D Benji. The Alien Ooze PLA produced a good Benji. The overhangs on the bow printed without issue. The details in the wheelhouse turned out well, as did the various arches and openings. There is a very slight bit of stringing inside the wheelhouse. There were no issues with the smokestack, and I'm happy with the way it turned out. On to the Calicat. This turned out pretty well too, although the tail had issues with cooling. The Ender 3 Pro's part cooling fan blows from right to left, so the 45 degree angle on the left side of the tail looks a bit rough. The rest of the Calicat is nice, the surface finish is smooth, and there were no strings at all on the print. And finally, here is the Aria Dragon by Luby 3D. With a translucent filament, it's kind of hard to see some of the details in the model. The legs turned out great, and all the overhangs printed well. The thin wings printed perfectly, with just a few strings in between, and a little bit of cobweb at the back. This is such a cool model, and it looks almost like a crystal dragon with his Alien Ooze PLA. So here are the test suite results, printing models at 215 degrees C on a 60 degrees C bed. The bridging performance, excellent, no sagging. Stringing performance, good, a few fine wispy strings and cobwebs, easily removed. Benchy performance, excellent. Calicat performance, good, there is a small issue on the tail and it seems to be cooling related. Aria performance, excellent. So after all that, here's what I think about it. This is a good quality filament for the price. Its performance is very good across the board, and I've had no trouble printing with it. It has a unique color, and it's made by IC3D, a reputable filament manufacturer in Columbus, Ohio. If you're in the market for a translucent yellowy-green PLA, look no further. There is a link in the description for the Alien Ooze PLA if you're interested in ordering some. Well, we're at the end of the video, and if you made it this far, thank you. And a big thanks to those of you who subscribe, like, comment on, and share these videos. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. But either way, leave your thoughts down in the comments. If you like the content I'm producing and want to support what I do, consider supporting the channel with a one-time micropayment. You could buy me a coffee or leave a little something in the PayPal tip jar. You can also support the channel by using my affiliate links when you're shopping around online. I've got links into Amazon, GearBest, and Wham Bam Systems, and using them doesn't cost you anything. And if you buy something from one of those retailers, when you go in through that link, they'll kick back a tiny percentage of that back to the channel. Links for all that stuff are in the description. So, while I have this Alien Ooze PLA still loaded on the printer, I'm going to go print something cool and yellowy green. You do the same, and I'll see you next time.